Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing an Apple a day by the band Apple. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. There's a lot to say about this album and I really want to get to all of this, but beforehand here are some of my favorite bits from this album. So there aren't many sayings that are so known as an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Around the world people say this in different languages and it's very synonymous with basic human health beliefs and I find that to be a very strong connection point right from the get go with your soon to be listener. Now in this video I'm going to talk a bit about the appeal of this album in particular because this one seems to be quite an anomaly in the world of popular music. But just as a bit of a background, Apple are a well band they founded in Cardiff back in 1968 and they released This Is Their Only Album in 1969. Now I'm not entirely sure how this album found its way on this list, whether I was recommended it or I found it myself and added it on, but the thing is this album really isn't progressive at all. I would even go as far to say that this album is the second least progressive album we've had on this list so far, of course only being topped by the number one Singularity by May. This album is actually categorized as psychedelic pop or even pop rock, but the thing is, it seems when you dig into the crevices of prog music and look up lists online, you always seem to find this album and I can't really tell you why. Like, I am not joking when I'm saying that this album isn't progressive. It is literally just pop music from the late 60s, not a lot more than that, it's even not that psychedelic to begin with, it's basically just pop rock. So alongside doing the regular review, we're also going to try and answer the question of why this album is so synonymous with progressive music. So the first thing you should probably know is that when this album actually came out, it kind of did really flop and thus not many copies of this album were made and in later years when it came in popularity it was really harder to find a copy of this one, an original copy, thus making this album quite exclusive. But why did this album see a sudden rise in popularity to begin with? What made it so good and so well appreciated after it actually flopped? Well I have two guesses as of why but none of them are actually that concrete and it's only my personal opinion. So the first one is I believe at least that this album has that reminiscent Beatle-esque sound from the their later works towards the end, the more psychedelic sound, the more experimental sound, and I think that that type of music became really popular not right after the Beatles disbanded, but later on, because as I understand it, when the Beatles actually disbanded, their most popular music was their early music, their lovey-dovey songs, but then when the progressive scene became more contemporary back in the day, I think that their later works became much more appreciated, and thus albums like these one were given some sort of a hidden gem status which was reminiscent of that later Beatles music. And secondly, you can't really argue it, the first thing that really pops into mind when I look into this is the infamous cover for Caterpillar's debut album, also having the apple on the cover and not much more than that, and I don't know, but myself included, I really found some connection between that album and today's album as well, and that made me think that this album was progressive, although it isn't that at all. So yeah, this album was basically at the right place at the right time, but just not when it was released, but honestly I think that this album rose into popularity because of some of the mystery surrounding it and the appeal that it has right away upon looking at its cover. And as a token for the success of this album, of course in the later years, I think that this one got two reissues on vinyl, one in 1994 and one just quite recently. But what's it like? So for starters, as I said, this is pretty much a pop 
album and almost all songs on it are averaging at three minutes long with two anomalies being the first one photograph which is four minutes long and sporting life which clocks in at an amazing five and a half minutes of runtime and your songs are just the average pop rock songs nothing too special i can really envision how it went down in the recording sessions hey what's this song called yeah okay re just repeat that same title just repeat it for the entire song okay and add some guitar solos you know at, at the end and a drummer drummer please please stop being creative okay this is no place for innovation oh and add some clapping in there yay okay just do like And honestly, most songs on here are really unimpressive. They're not bad to listen to. I didn't really suffer listening to them, but they're just really unimpressive. There are only a few which I really have anything to comment on. The song The Other Side, I think, is the one which has the most potential. It's a really beautifully sad song in its essence, but its upbeat drumming just really destroys everything that it stands for. The song The Mayville Line has the lines, oh yeah, repeated so many times on it, I'm honestly surprised that it's not the track's title. And the only track on here which I would really call progressive in some way would be the track Photograph with its 4 minutes which definitely made a difference in the way that it sounded. This one's a lot more colorful, a lot more instrumental and I liked it quite a bit actually. But when it comes down to it, this is just your basic pop rock album. There are some psychedelic characteristics to it but honestly it's just really plain in many senses. But I was prepared for it from the moment I saw that it didn't even have a page on the Prague archives, so... This cover really doesn't have a lot to it, honestly. It is what it is, it delivers, it shows, it says, and it has. It's just an apple on a blank black background. But honestly, I don't really have a lot to say about this cover, so for the sake of doing something interesting and buying more time, let's do something quite different. What variety of apple is found on this cover? Here are the answers down here, write your answer down in the comments and if you're right I'm gonna give you a heart and if you're incorrect you should review your apple variety charts. So yeah, this album is fun and all but really not progressive but you know what, heck it's fun so I'm gonna give it a rating of 6 out of 10. But that's about it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're gonna be listening to Mask by Kansas. I of course want to thank my lovely supporter over on Patreon, so thank you so much to Clay Walner, you are the best and if any of you want to support me over on Patreon, you can find the link down in the description or in my about page. But that's about it guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye guys.